Hello and welcome to 12th session of ASME B31.3 course. This is Ali and I hope you are doing well. Referring to previous session, now you are familiar with the concept of design pressure, design temperature, design minimum temperature and requirements and acceptance criteria for impact testing. Also, you know about the code, standard and specification and function of them in a project. Now it's a time to talk about pressure design of piping components based on part 2 of chapter 2 design of ASME B31.3. Piping components are categorized into two major groups in B31.3 listed components and unlisted components. By listed components code means standards and components specified in table 326.1 you are familiar with the standard as a type of document used in piping to find the standard of each component we should refer to table 326.1 in this course we will discuss about the pressure design of listed components only and unlisted component which have not been specified in table 326.1 are not the subject of this course. Let's start with the pressure design of piping component with an important example, a straight pipe. Let's find out which standard is specified for pipe in table 326.1. ASME B36.10 is specified as a standard for welded and seamless route steel pipe and ASME B36.19 for stainless steel pipe. It means that the standard of pipe depends on the material of pipe. So when we are calculating the thickness of pipe, we should use the applicable standard that is based on the material of that pipe. Based on the previous sessions, you should know about the function of the standard as a common reference between different parties in a project. It's important to have a look on ASME B36.10 to bring us closer to the objective of this episode. Knowing about parameters of Table 1 of ASME B36.10, dimensions and weights, of welded and seamless route steel pipe is essential for the calculation of the wall thickness of a pipe. The first parameter, MPS, nominal pipe size, is a dimensionless designator used in customary unit. Please note that below MPS equal to 14, NPS doesn't give us information about dimension of pipe. For example, if we have a pipe with NPS equal to 6, we can have dimension of section of pipe only by referring to ASME B36.10. But for a pipe with NPS equal to 14 and greater, NPS is equal to the outside diameter. For example, the outside diameter of pipe with NPS equal to 20 is equal to 20 inches. Let's review dimension of pipe in section. Outside diameter, wall thickness and inside diameter are dimension of pipe in section. It's clear that inside diameter is equal to outside diameter minus 2 times of thickness. Based on ASME B36.10, there is a rule for dimension of pipe. For each NPS, the outside diameter is constant. Therefore, inside diameter will decrease if wall thickness increases. Now it's the time to talk about the wall thickness of pipe. Actually, you couldn't find any thickness you want in a market. Generally, the production lines of pipe are restricted to the thicknesses set in the related standards. Therefore, we should generally order pipe with thicknesses specified in related standards to optimize the cost. There are some exceptions that will be discussed in the future in this course. Three methods used for specifying wall thickness of pipe in ASME B36.10. The traditional method for specifying wall thickness of pipe 
is identification. By identification, ASME B36.10 means a standard or STD, extra strong or XS, and double extra strong or XXS. Actually, the early manufacturers of iron pipe in United States used this method as a weight scale to divide each nominal pipe size into three wall thicknesses. For example, there are three thicknesses for pipe with NPS equal to 4 based on identification method. The wall thickness of NPS equal to 4 with STD or standard identification is equal to 0.237 inches or 6.02 millimeters. The wall thickness of pipe with NPS equal to 4 with XS or extra strong identification is equal to 0.337 inches or 8.56 millimeters. The wall thickness of NPS equal to 4 with XXS or double extra strong identification is equal to 0.674 inches or 17.12 millimeters. Actually, pipes are available in market with STD extra strong and double extra strong more than other thicknesses because manufacturers of pipe maintained such production lines after initiation of other methods for specifying thickness of pipe. What would be your guess as to the reasons that brought about the initiation of other methods other than a standard, extra strong, and double extra strong for specifying the thickness of the pipe? As an engineer, you know that the design shall meet the safety as a first priority. Therefore, if our engineering calculation resulted to the wall thickness between two thicknesses presented by the standard, we shall select the conservative one. For example, if our calculated wall thickness parts between XS and XXS, we shall select double extra strong to be on the safe side. However, by selecting XXS, we will impose extra cost to the project. So other methods for specifying thickness offer wider range of thicknesses to optimize the cost. With the development of oil industry in the United States, the material of pipes changed to carbon steel due to its properties. Therefore, the cost of pipes became more important that led to the second method for specifying thickness known as the schedule number presented by ASME. This method covers the range of schedule number 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, and 160. However, that range is not available for each size. For example, for pipe with NPS equal to 30, only pipe with schedule number 5, 10, 20, and 30 are available. Please note that the pipe's schedule only represents the naming. In other words, we couldn't have the thickness of pipe in inch or millimeter by having its schedule. In this case, we have to refer to the standard to find out the thickness. If the pipe material is carbon steel, we should refer to a standard ASME B36.10. And if the material is a stainless steel, we should refer to a standard ASME B36.19. Let's continue with an example. The thickness of carbon steel pipe with NPS equal to 6 and schedule number 80 is 0.432 inches or 10.97 millimeters. You can see that this thickness is equal to 
extra strong. It means that there is no difference to specify schedule AT or XS for a pipe with NPS equal to 6 when the thickness is 10.97 millimeters. It's interesting to note that for cases where NPS is equal to 10 and less, a schedule for T is equal to STD and for NPS equal to 8 and less, a schedule AT is equal to double extra strong. Another example, the thickness of carbon steel pipe with NPS equal to 8 and schedule number AT is 0.5 inches or 12.7 millimeters. It shows that the same schedule number resulted to different wall thickness for different size. Therefore, we have to refer to dimensional standard of pi to find the thickness of each size. If we have a stainless steel pipe, we should refer to ASME B36.19 for specifying thickness of pipe. In this case, the suffix S comes after schedule number to illustrate the material is stainless steel. For example, the thickness of a stainless steel pipe with NPS equal to 6 and schedule number ATS is 0.432 inches or 10.97 millimeters. You can see that the thicknesses of a stainless steel pipes are limited. If pressure design calculation of a stainless steel pipe results to the thickness out of the range presented in B36.19, we can refer to B36.10 based on paragraph 1 of this standard. ASME B36.10 includes other pipe thicknesses that are also commercially available with stainless steel material. Same as a standard extra strong and double extra strong. The schedule number are also available in the market. You can easily order and purchase pipe with them. Wall thicknesses other than a standard extra strong and double extra strong and a schedule number were adopted from API 5L. This is the third method used for specifying thickness. It covers wider range of thicknesses that in some cases are incompatible with identification or schedule number. However, all of them may not be available in the market. In such a case, if you order pipes with wall thickness other than those of a standard extra strong, double extra strong, and a schedule numbers, you most likely will receive offer from bidders that round up wall thickness to the nearest identification or schedule number. But there is an exception. If you have a pipeline with hundreds of kilometers of length, it's worth to select such wall thickness that is close to pressure design calculation. In this case, you will order the thickness of pipe based on API 5L. In this way, you should pay more for selecting thickness that is not available in the market, same as STD, XS, XXS, and schedule numbers. However, you will save considerable material and cost by selecting nearest thickness to the pressure design calculation. Actually, this is the philosophy behind presenting wide range of thickness by API 5L that are used for ordering and manufacturing line pipes. Now, there is one more topic left to cover the dimension of pipe in section. Another way to specify the size of a pipe is DN or nominal diameter used in SI unit instead of NPS in customer unit. DN has a logical relationship with NPS for NPS equals 4 and larger. Actually, by multiply NPS by 25, 
we can have equivalent dn of pipe for MPS equals 4 and larger. But there is no way to find out corresponding dn of NPS for NPS equals 3 and less except referring to the standard. Corresponding dn of NPS equals 1 half is 15. Corresponding dn of NPS equals 3 quarter is 20. Corresponding dn of NPS equals 1 and a half is 40. Corresponding dn of NPS equals 2 is 50. And corresponding dn of NPS equals 3 is 80. Let's go back to pressure design of a straight pipe that finally will lead to the selection of appropriate wall thickness from dimensional standard. Based on ASME B31.3, the minimum required pipe wall thickness TM is equal to T increased by C, which T comes from equation 3A. Therefore, Tm is equal to P multiplied by D divided by 2 times of SEW plus PY add to C. In this equation, T is pressure design thickness as calculated in accordance with paragraph 304.1.2 for internal pressure. This thickness will sustain internal design pressure through its life cycle and last day of working life. C is some of the mechanical allowances plus corrosion and erosion allowances. P is internal design gauge pressure that you are familiar with its concept. D is outside diameter of pipe that you know how to find it. S equals stress value for material from table A1 that you are familiar how to find it. E is quality factor from table A-1A or table A-1B. Y is coefficient from table 304.1.1 and W is well joint stress reduction factor in accordance with paragraph 302.3.5e. Based on my teaching experience, it's better to calculate wall thickness of pipe with an example considering the design conditions step by step. Next session will be a workshop in which we will calculate thickness of pipe using Microsoft Excel to create formula. Next session would be great to sum up your knowledge through this course that makes you a skilled engineer who can determine wall thickness of pipe considering design conditions. Thanks for being with us.